Now this is a rare object, the Queen Marionette of 1914. This Villendorfian monarch presided over the demolition of genteel Victorian theater, an event engineered by her wild-eyed British designer, Gordon Craig. Craig was a symbolist stage designer with a serious weakness for anything Greek, particularly their ancient theater that operated on masked archetypes and states of spiritual intoxication. Her charms are enormous, and she reminds us how exciting puppetry appeared to the early 20th century artists, who challenged both theater and art conventions of the day. The Queen is joined in the category of avant-garde puppetry by King Oedipus, a nine-foot specimen by Sicilian firebrand Remo Bufano, known in the 1930s for his anti-fascist puppetista parades in New York City. My sorrowful associate here was the first to perform the tragic role in Igor Stravinsky's opera for its American debut in 1931, an event fulfilling Gordon Craig's prophecy of the rise of an uber marionette to put an end to the disgraceful mugging of live stage actors. In a lighter-hearted mood, Buffano also built these comically cross-hatched walrus and carpenter figures, full canvas suits that completely enveloped the puppeteers performing in an adaptation of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. I wonder if Buffano was thinking of the mathematical riddles that lace Wonderland when he conjured up John Tenniel's famous pen and ink drawings in three dimensions. <laughs>